Hey guys, it is a new year. Happy new year and it is prom season again. Stop looking at me like I'm weird. You know, I hate hearing myself talk anyway. Hey guys. Cause that's how I just, that's me doing my thing. I'm doing my thing. Anywho, so I'm starting with my first prom promo dress for this year. Last year, I posted um, the white dress that I posted with the drawstring, with the drawstrings, with the um, corset strings in the back was the first uh, video I pretty much posted for my YouTube channel, and it went amazing last year. I did not expect it to go so well. I just jumped out on a limb and started YouTube and got a little more confident over time doing it and posted a few more videos. So this is the first video for this year. And we are starting off with another prom promo dress. So this dress, it is a little bit on the bridal side, but it can also be a prom dress for any prom young lady that is wanting to wear white with some crystals and some rhinestone applique. So actually this, this is the applique right here. Let me see if I could put it down. And then I already cut out the dress, so. Let's see if we could get this going. All right. Okay, so this is some crystal rhinestone. It's a bodice. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it into a whole bunch of pieces of applique. Yeah, and it's super pretty. You see how pretty it shines? Okay, now, so this is the dress. This is the back of the dress. Now, the lining is on the outside right now, but it's gonna be lace on the top. And then, got a little slit for the zipper. That's the back, it's gonna have a little V cut in the back. And here is the front where you can see the lace on the top. And then we're gonna overlay it with some applique rhinestone pieces, some straps at the top. And we have some chiffon. What is this? Is from Joann's. So let me tell you guys exactly what it is. Yes, it is chiffon. So you can see that. Some tool and some type of. It's just like a a regular mesh from Joann's. Yeah, and I have a picture, hold on. Okay, so this is the sketch of the dress. And these are my mannequin's measurements. Right here, bust 34 and a half, waist 26 and a half, hip 40, waist to knee 25, waist to floor 47, knee to floor 24. And these are the lengths from the bust to the waist 9 inches, well, a 12 and a half from the tip of where the where this starts here to the waist. That's 12 and a half. And then from the waist to the hip is 11. And then, what do we have here? Oh, around the knee, it's 27 inches. So yeah, so the whole length from the tip of the dress to the knee is 37 and a half inches. And this lace fabric does not stretch as much, so I did add a half an inch seam allowance on there, so yeah. All right, so let's get started. Then we have this situation here. So, this is where the zipper is going to go in the back. Here. Zipper. And then the front. Like this. This is the front. But the seams are all stitched together from here all the way around to the zipper. I did not stitch the seams together for this part here. But I'm about to add the straps. So I cut my one and a half inches out for my straps. 
uh, serged it together and then flipped it inside out. And I have two straps here. What is she doing now? So well, what I want to do, I want to add some. Figured I'd pay my respects to the money you owe us. Jesus, clearly this was a bad idea. Why don't you just give us what we came for? We'll get out of your silky smooth. Yeah, I want to add some elastic for the the um, neckline, or I might just end up sewing a seam together. Either one. I may just sew the seam together. Nice bag. And then um, add the the um, straps and inside. So let's try that. zipper and I'm thinking I like the straps like this okay so now we're gonna cut this piece up into different pieces and pin it on and see what we like okay so I decided to work with the chiffon first this is the chiffon and I did cut off a few inches on the bottom of the skirt so I now have to make the adjustments and I remeasured everything so right now you guys can see it clear so right now I have 29 inches 29 inches around the knee and then I have 20 this time this way and then I have 28 inches from the knee to the floor. So I want it to fluff out a little bit in the front. So I'm gonna add eight inches to the length. So that's gonna be 36 inches total. And then to the back, I would like a train. So I'm gonna add 20 inches to 48 inches. Okay, so this is our 28. So that's how I know that I need more than 28. If you want to get an exact number for where you want it to the distance to fall you could do all of that trigonometry stuff and i am not doing all of that so now here is our fabric and this is the fold so now right now i'm trying to calculate how many layers of the chiffon i can get out of what, how much fabric I bought. So here is gonna be a little bit of calculation. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back and explain the whole thing. Okay, so here's the gist. <laughs> I had to do this a couple times because I couldn't really visualize what I wanted to do. Okay, so the fabric is 60 inches wide and if I fold it, it's 30 inches. So right now, you can see that it's 30 inches from here to here is 30 inches, but when I unfold it, it's 60 inches. Okay, so for the, let's do the front first. So for the front, you know, is like pretty much like a square. And you cut the circle out. This is the part that lines up to the front of the knee. I decided to do, uh, okay, I probably have to go into deeper detail about this. Normally, this would be a fold here. I do the full circle, and then I'd sew this around the whole bottom. But I want more fullness. So, I calculated to where this on the fold, or this, this is straight open, but this is just the front. Just because of the length that we had. So, this is open, there's no fold. And we're gonna cut this out here on the edge. And then we'll cut around our length that we need from here to here is 36 inches as well. So 36, 36, 36 in the front. And this is what it looks like, 77 inches across. So when I come here, I'll measure out 77 inches. I'll cut it, then I'll unfold it, and then I'll cut out my circle like that. So for the back, it's a little different just because the length from here to here is longer to match the train. So here I have 48 because that's what I had calculated previously. I wanted for the train. But since this is 60 inches, and if I only cut out 48, I'll be here. And I have all this leftover fabric, so I decided why not just use another 12 inches of fabric for the train. So 
so I'll do 60. So instead of this, it'll be 60. Let me change that. 60 inches. Well, minus the 2.5, so. 57.5 inches. Yep, from here to here is 57.5 inches plus 2.5 inches for the um, radius of this circle here. All right, so, but for the same, when I, I have to sew the seams of these together here and here. So we want this to equal. We want this part and this part to be equal. So these are the same. And then we just cut it out deeper so that we have the train going. And then, yeah, so let's start with that with the chiffon. So now, but with the chiffon fabric and with the bottom overall, I'm gonna keep doing it over and over and over again so that it's full. So we're just gonna just keep cutting it out over. So we'll see how much fabric we have, we'll see if we're able to do it at least twice. All right. Okay, so this is our fabric, the front. This will be the front. And so this is the 77, but since it's uh, folded, uh, it is 38 and a half. So also because it's folded, I'm not cutting a circle here. I'm cutting a quarter of a circle here, but it's still gonna be the 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, just like that. And then from this point, so, one mistake I make sometimes, I end up cutting the, the circle out right here for the front of the skirt, that part, and then having no point to reference to swing the measuring tape over for the outside of the circle. So, do that last. So, from this point to this point, we want to do the 38 and a half, 38 and a half, 38 and a half, cut all of that out, and then go back in and cut the 2.5 inches out here. Boom, and that's the front. And then we'll go back to the back and we'll do it again, just almost the same. It'll be the quarter of the circle here, the uh, rest of that, and then instead of doing a full circle, we're gonna go here and we're gonna come all the way down to the train, because the train will come right here and shoot all the way up. Boom, just like that. All right, let me cut this out now. Okay, so this is the front. You see that I cut this part out. That is, so this whole part is just gonna fit in the front of this part and we're gonna redo it for the back so that it has the train. This is just extra fabric. Maybe it'll come in use later, I don't know. Okay, now here is the back. You see the difference? So the front, it curved. Don't mind my little mistake right there. <laughs> It doesn't matter, it'll get, in the hem, it'll get blended out. But instead of coming here and all the way around, the front curves like that. The back, when you're doing a train, comes here and long ways down. So this is the length of our train. Again, you can see here, is right now it's on the fold, but if you open it up, it looks just like this picture here. The length here is longer, and this matches the front. So this length and everything up here is the same as the front piece. Hey guys, so the next step for the dress is I'm going to be sewing. I cut out two layers of the chiffon. So I'm going to be stitching the seams together on those layers and then pinning it to the bottom of the dress to see what we got going on. And then I'm going to work on the next layer and the next layer and the next layer. And once we like everything, I'll stitch it all together and then sew it to the bottom of the dress. Then we'll cut out the applique and then hand sew the applique onto the dress. I might even glue the applique on just because it's a quicker method and I would like to see how it works out. So yeah. All right, so here's the first layer. Um, I'm pinning it for now. The second layer is right here. And this is what we got. So far, we're gonna keep going and layering and layering and add more layers. I also surged the edge here. So I sewed the seams up on both sides and then surged the edges. All right, I'm gonna pin this on and then pin the second layer on and see what we're working with. Here are our two layers pinned. So both layers are now pinned. 
here. About to add the next layer, which I think I'm gonna go with the tool. Yeah. Okay, boom. So now we're working on the tool. So I laid the tool to the edge of the back of the train and then measured it all the way up. You just take the measuring tape and measure how long the back of the train is, which I'm pretty sure is like 60, if I'm not mistaken, around that area. So I'm gonna measure that one piece and then I'm just gonna cut a whole bunch of pieces out until we run out of tool. This is 20 yards, so it should take a while. So this piece is... Refined with indulgent scents for beautifully nourished skin. 58 and a half. Boom. So now I'm just gonna cut a whole bunch of 58 and a half pieces out. Maybe like, well, I'll divide it by, see how many 58 and a half pieces I can get. Plus, because that's a train to the front, which is less than 50 and a half. So I wanted to see if I could get equal pieces. Okay, so I cut out eight strips of 58 and a half inches it probably fell a little short in some places but and eight strips of um 37 inches okay so this is what we got I put, I worked up a sweat. I feel like running around this dress, pinning all this stuff down. So, so far, this is this. And we have one more layer. I'm gonna add our last layer on. And then after, I just, I'm pinning it so I can put it in place. After I'm gonna kinda pin everything together and throw a stitch, so each layer is gonna be like a, a piece of skirt and then I'll pin it on there. It'll be a little raw in this area, but it doesn't matter because I'm putting applique around here. Rhinestone applique and then rhinestone applique at the top. So let's take a trip around. And that's what it looks like on the bottom. Super gorge. Got our last layer to put on. I'll come back when I'm starting on that. Okay, here's our first piece that I cut off that was here. I'll cut that off. So now I'm going to go through and look at some other pieces. Like I like this right here, how that shaped. Then it comes around again. And then we just fill in other pieces somewhere else. Okay guys, so this is where I am right now. So these are the applique pieces that I cut out. This this one here is from the bodice. This is also from the bodice. So it's three different pieces here. But it was kind of like the beads were starting to fall off a little bit cutting the bodice up. So if I'm gonna add any more down further, I would have to just buy applique pieces and add them in the middle. I'm not against it having just that, just because of the texture from the lace. Um, as far as the bottom, I actually like it with the tool at the top as a top layer. I do want to add some more tool in the back, two more pieces for the most part. So I'm going to get five more yards and add that in the back right here. And then I'll put crystals over the straps and then the zipper. If this was a wedding dress for sure, I'm really interested in doing the, um, the little loop buttons. I would have definitely done that for this, but maybe a different dress, a different promo. But yeah, this is what we got so far. Super gorgeous. So I'm about to do all the finishing touches right now. And once I'm done, I'll let you guys see. Also, I decided that I want to try gluing down the applique instead of hand stitching it to see if it would be a quicker method to help me this year with prom season. As long as it's efficient, it's good with me and the glue is super, super strong. So, yep, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Okay, boom, so these are the crystals we're gonna be using. They came out of this little package though. And 
first I'm going to glue this down, all of these pieces down. This is the first time I'm gluing it. And then we're going to put the crystals on the straps and see how that goes.